Hello, I'm Jack Rayner, and you're listening to a podcast of Spurious Morality. Hello and welcome to a podcast of Spurious Morality. Um, we, we thought we were done. We'd finished our first series. We told you all, all of you lovely listeners, we put it on Facebook and Twitter and all over the place that we were done. We were having a little break and we weren't coming back until July. It turns out that was a little bit of a lie. Um, so uh, we, we have a very special guest today. Um, we are joined by uh, Jacqueline Rayner. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello. Yes, I am very special. Thank you. Oh, it's it's fantastic to have you on. Um, <laughs> so uh, I am Johnston as you. ever, and I am joined by Connor as well. Hello. Um, so we are going to throw a few Doctor Who Big Finish related questions at you, Jack. If that's okay. That's fine. Of course. Marvelous stuff. I may not tell the truth. Oh, that that that's fine. Nobody tells the truth on this <laughs> podcast. It's. That, that's the spurious morality. That's where it comes from. Um, so um, we, we issue a spoiler warning at the start of these, but I, I don't know where to start with this, really. We had this same problem with John Dorney the other week, sort of where do you start on a spoiler warning? So we are just going to say anything that Jack Rayner has been involved with. So that's a very significant chunk of Doctor Who that uh, is covered under our spoiler warning this week but that's too fine. too much too much no never too much absolutely <laughs> not <laughs> um but we are definitely going to be talking uh, a bit about the recent six doctor stuff the six doctor mel and hebe so if you've not heard those yet then sort of a special extra spoiler warning we're definitely going to cover those um so uh the first question is um just tell us a little bit about how you very first started writing for the Hooniverse. What was your Doctor Who introduction, as it were? Um, well, I mean, apart from stories in my school exercise books, um, I'd always wanted to write. You know, that was a thing I was going to write. Doctor Who writing wasn't particularly something that I had considered um, you know, I was thinking more on the lines of I wanted to write comedy, I wanted to write children's sort of adventure books. Um, but then uh, I'd been a fan for a very long time. I then got to my later teens when I sort of grew out of it a bit. Um, you know, it's all a bit exams and boyfriends and things. Um, and actually, I'm going to... <laughs> This is what you were going to ask me about, but I'm going to put it in here. Um, I went along to my university science fiction society Christmas quiz. And this is when I've been, you know, out of the world of Doctor Who uh, for a few years, really. Um, and their last question was, complete the quote, there's nothing you can do to stop. And they were obviously expecting comedy answers, but I wrote the correct answer. And suddenly, people were going, oh, you know about Doctor Who? And I was sort of like, yeah, well, I did, you know, yeah. And then I just found myself in the midst of these absolutely wonderful people who are some of the best people I've ever, ever known. And I just got back into the world of Who because of them, because they were so brilliant. And I appreciated it all over again because I was in this amazing company and through these people um 
I got to go along to conventions. Um, there was, oh, I was lucky enough to be um, at university with a wonderful man called Paul Condon, um, who we sadly lost a few years ago. And he was this amazing man who organised um, things like Monopticon conventions. And so, you know, I got dragged along to these things and I got to know people there. And um, I got to know all these brilliant people like Paul Cornell, Gary Russell, Steve Cole, Justin Richards, who all in um, one way or another have encouraged me, been my mentors, brought me into all these things. And there's no way I'd be where I am today without without them. And um, because writing was something I always wanted to do, and I was suddenly in this um, uh this atmosphere uh, with these people, it was, you know, actually, could I do some writing for Doctor Who, please? Or, you know, associated things. Um, and so it was very much, um, I was in the right place at the right time. Um, this is when we, the Virgin Books had been going for a while. The Virgin Books had already started when I got to know these these friends um, and they were like, right, you've got to read these. And you know, so got into all that thing. And um, I asked uh, Gary Russell with Paul, Cornell, with Paul Cornell's blessing, uh, you know, Paul doesn't want to, or do, Paul doesn't have time to do the uh, Benny adaptations. Um, you know, do you think you could give me a, a, a tryout for it? And unbelievably Gary said yes and I did the first one and he said would you like to do some more <laughs> you know if somebody says to a writer you know would you like some more work in um, a field that you love you say yes um, and then oh um, I got to know Steve Cole as well and said can I you know maybe help you out at BBC Books went along to BBC Books and um, found out that was a place that I was really happy and comfortable and it was lovely and brilliant and I was the luckiest person ever in that, you know, I got to be there, as I say, right time with people willing to take a chance on me because although in my head I was a writer, obviously in no one else's head, mainly because they'd never seen anything I'd written, you know, <laughs> I was a, um, I was an amateur uh and yeah, they gave me all a chance and um, I just, oh, I just loved it. I loved all of it. You know, the atmosphere, the fun, um, working collaboratively with people. It was just brilliant. Um, and yeah, so I've just filled up your entire podcast with the answer to your first question. So um, I'll stop there. But uh, yeah, uh, luck, uh, big part of it. But I'm very... Yeah. And of course, it's 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 based around the quote that we've nicked our podcast title from as well. So that's even better. That's brilliant. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, I mean, it, it's it's great. Sort of. I, I was a um, I did a writing course at university. I did a script writing course at university, and it it was one of the greatest times of my life because I was around you know that kind of person, the person that does want to write, people that want to do that kind of thing, and. You know, people that uh, will meet up and watch Doctor Who and all that kind of thing. So yeah, it's such a great atmosphere to be in. Um, so yeah, it's fantastic that that's kind of where it came from because I've been in sort of fairly similar situation myself. Um, do you want to do the next one, Connor? Yeah, um, I, I just want to add as well. Um, in as an as an addition to the spurious morality story, um, a couple of years ago, a, fr a friend and I were planning to hopefully launch a podcast together. Uh, it was a friend from over here and um, he came down to my house, he came down from the other end of the country and we spent an hour or two watching Spearhead from Space and then we recorded and we are going to do a whole series and we decided it was going to be an episode a month and that had started because one of us had asked what, if you were going to do a podcast, what would be the title and the other replied it was going to be Gallifrey and Buccaneers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, would be our podcast title oh, and um we, we started doing that then um and we'll finish that we we're going to record a series of six or seven episodes and then release them all sort of at once 
and he said, I said, see you next month, um, we'll do it again. And then that was March 2020. It never happened because he wasn't able to get down. Oh, no. <laughs> um, oh dear. And it, it ultimately didn't happen. But we did get to do an episode of this together. So the Gallifreyan Buccaneers did eventually happen. Um, oh, fantastic. <laughs> if you'll excuse the pun, you uh, jumped ship to us. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> Oh no, um, I'm going to stop that now. Right, go ahead, Connor. <laughs> um, so we wanted to ask a bit about what your what I, I can only imagine has been taking up an awful lot of your time over the last year or two. Then, which is talk us through a little bit about the development of the new Sixth Doctor adventures. Right. Well, um, what I wanted to do, um, and you know, this sounds so pretentious. But I wanted to do something that, you know, meant something. And I was lucky enough to obviously to be working with Colin, who um, just obviously he knows his doctor inside out and he knows what's right for his doctor. And he asked, you know, can we have you know, a big arc, something, you know, that means something, something maybe a bit dark. Um, yeah, that's sort of where I want to be going as well. So that's brilliant. Um, and um, another huge I just, look. I just get so lucky. Um, I was told when I when I was asked to be producer, and I went, oh, um, because it's not a job. That's it's not my sort of job. I'm a, a sitting at a computer on my own thinking words in my head and putting them on paper person I'm not a uh dealing with other things and admin and people and talking type person um so it was all a bit scary um but because it was sixth doctor I could not say no I just could not say no um anything else but no sixth doctor um and I said okay so we've got um uh, a guy called Rob Valentine who is the script editor for the sixth doctor and I was sort of like a bit Oh, but I don't know him. I've got to work with someone I don't know. I'm, you know, already feeling, uh, yeah, a little bit lost. And now I've got to work with someone I don't even know. And, oh, um, Rob is just amazing. Um, we clicked instantly. Um, I absolutely, I think he's wonderful as a person as well as um, creatively. So, you know, that's been brilliant. But what it meant was um, we... I had, I had someone I could bounce ideas off and so did he and things just really started to, to work um, with both of us going in the same direction. Um, and because I am, I'm a wheelchair user myself, um, a part-time wheelchair user, uh, it's something that's sort of uh, come on over a, a few years uh, due to some rather um, unpleasant things happening uh no that that's good sorry that sounds awful that sounds really um like sinister no I just mean you know physically um I have needed to use a wheelchair um and you find a completely different world if you're in a wheelchair um people look at you differently and you suddenly realize um there are people out there who are wonderful and welcoming and there are people out there who are not um, and on top of that, the world itself isn't geared up for that sort of person. And I do like characters who are a bit flawed. Um, and it felt rather like we could have somebody um, who's going to put this across um, what it's like to be in that sort of world. But we're heightening it because you've got all the other things that the Doctor Who universe throws at you on top of what the real world throws at you. Um, And we can say something in science fiction terms um, about the attitude towards um, disabled people and disability. Um, Because saying things um, in science fiction is, it's a really good way of getting those things across, sort of, you know, slipping ideas in under the radar a bit um I mean, not hugely under the radar because you know Hebe doesn't exactly keep quiet about this sort of thing um but when you're presenting it in a science fiction light um that does help 
Um, so Rob and I got together and um, realised that uh, with all these aspects together, what we're really looking at um, is something about uh, a character who does not think of themselves as evil. Um, that's the really big thing. They don't think that they are evil. They think they are a good person. Um, and we discover that they're not. Um, and again, you know, you're just, you're not trying to make huge commentaries on the world, but it is something that we really wanted to talk about. Um, and it developed from there because with the Sixth Doctor, you could do this. The Sixth Doctor has got that heart. He would take someone like Hebe under his wing completely, but he would also allow her to have agency, which is very important. We don't want people speaking for uh, the disabled person, um, but would also, you know, back her up um, and would have this righteous indignation that's what Colin does so well he does those moments of real care and concern and empathy and then he can do that just turn it to that absolute righteous indignation and you really feel it and I don't think there will be in any way a better doctor that you could do this sort of story with because um that's just, uh, oh, you'd want the sixth doctor with you um, if you were going through this sort of thing. That is the person that you would want with you because he will do the, he will do what is needed um, at every point. Um, yeah, I this, this always happens when I'm being interviewed. I, I can't actually remember where I started, so I'm not quite sure where to stop. Um, that's sort of, that's how it began anyway. I think somewhere in that you got um, a bit about how it began. Um, I, I think you've... <laughs> and where we might be going, I guess. I think you've actually covered two questions in that as well, because the next one was sort of tell Probably. us about the development of Hebe. But uh, like, <laughs> yeah, and it, it's, I mean, she's, she's such a brilliantly unique companion, but at the same time, she's such a believable companion. She's such a... Like she's absolutely great with the doctor and Mel as well, and I think it's it's the dynamic of the three of them that's just really made this enjoyable. I'm really, I'm really glad you think that. Um, obviously, we love her. Uh, I know there are people who don't, um, but I think that's better than just sort of being bland. Uh, you know, hopefully, she is somebody that is real. Um, and, she, you know, she certainly has got a lot to say. Um, you know, she is her own person. And um, the fact that, uh, oh, we managed to get Ruth for her. I, I was determined I wanted Ruth so badly. I really, really did. And it took quite a while. Not because Ruth wasn't willing, but because Ruth is unbelievably busy and on this huge upward trajectory. And, you know, she is, <laughs> she is such a star that, getting her was hard but um I just yeah she she was Hebe in my head she was Hebe and she had to be Hebe and thankfully um she found time for us which uh I'm just so grateful for yeah she's brilliant oh, excellent stuff yeah she's a brilliant companion keep her around forever <laughs> it's a great she's great um I uh, certainly will if I can <laughs> Marvellous. Um, so, uh, I get, well, again, you've half answered this. I think you've managed to do like half of our questions in, in one there. Brilliant. <laughs> um, but uh, we were sort of going to ask. This is, why I, this is why I don't do podcasts. I just don't, I don't stop talking. It's, it's, um, oh, it's not a bad thing. It's, it's not, not a bad thing. Um, well, what we were going to ask was sort of, did you choose the Sixth Doctor or the Sixth Doctor choose you? Um, which you which kind of half answered there, but just kind of like you said, it would only be the sixth doctor that, yeah, that you'd kind of go for. Um, so tell us a bit more about your love for the sixth doctor then. Oh, well, I think mean, it's right from the beginning. Um, uh, I've been, I was, you know, I, I was born in the early 70s, so 
all through growing up, Tom Baker was the doctor. You know, I got into fandom, Bruce Davison, he was great, that was brilliant. And this, but Colin Baker just, you know, appeared on screen and I was, apart from the coat, I love this guy. He just, I'm not saying that the was, I think everyone knows there's, you know, there's a few problems with it, but they certainly weren't with the Doctor. Um, and I loved Perry. I loved Mel. Um, he, just, he just really, um, I just really felt connected to him. Um, he was uh, just so, so big, such a big character. Um, so when Big Finish started, uh, when they started doing Doctor Who, so I'd done some um, the some of the Benny stuff, and um, the expectation was obviously Doctor Who. Uh, you know, that's probably not something that's not going to happen for a while. Um, and then at one point, um, I was talking to Gary Russell, and he said to me, uh, "If you had a choice." what Doctor would you write a script for? And I just instantly said, Sixth Doctor, obviously. You know, that was never a question in my mind. And he went, okay, went away, came back later and said, so, <laughs> this Sixth Doctor script you're going to be writing. And it was, ah! <laughs> um, So, again, huge luck. I got to be there at the beginning of the Sixth Doctor um, with Big Finish. Um, Colin's already done Sirens of Time. Um, he'd done Whispers of Terror, um, which was a absolutely fantastic concept and script by by wonderful Justin Richards. Um, and um, then Gary wanted to sort of you know take it in a slightly different direction because that's something Colin wanted to do as well. Um, and the fact that I was you know allowed to go in and start doing that. So after that, there was sort of never a feeling that I wanted to desperately break out and write for anyone else. I I think I have been lucky enough to write for other doctors. Um, and I always feel it's a privilege. Um, it's just, you know, so great that I can get to do things for different iterations of this amazing character. But I do just feel this connection to the sixth doctor, and that is where I will naturally gravitate to um and yeah as I say producing I, I had sort of vaguely talked to David Richardson about maybe doing something a bit in the behind the scenes sort of area um but with you know no particular um conclusion or you know anything and and then David said can we have a chat you know you you had said at one point about maybe doing something and I was sort of well yeah thinking uh, yeah but I think it was the right thing that nothing ever happened this is not my sort of cup of tea at all instantly I don't like cups of tea so that doesn't really work as an expression but um I was like well whatever he's gonna say I'm gonna say no because no um it's too scary it's much too scary and then he said we're looking for a new producer for the Sixth Doctor Adventures, and yeah, that was a yeah, and it's been a very steep learning curve. I've made a lot of mistakes along the way, um, but I'm really, really chuffed that they asked me to do it, and um, I just have such a blast. Um, and working with Colin as well, who, as I say knows his character so well and has ideas for his character and knows what's right for him uh that's how it all happens so it's a bit of both <laughs> um i certainly chose him and to some extent um uh, i was lucky enough that he seemed to want me on board as well so yeah really just one of those um oh I can't quite believe that you know all these lovely things are happening but they happened I mean it's not all lovely I get um things wrong a lot but there's still a hell of a lot I'm, are we allowed to say hell I'm not sure what what your podcast rating is we, we there's an awful lot 
of things <laughs> that make it very worthwhile <laughs> We, we used to be a non-sweary podcast and then uh, we had Chris Chapman on and we had to <laughs> we had to sacrifice our uh, our our not explicit <laughs> tag um because there was there was no editing around it. He wanted to do Doctor Who and the Cannibals as a story. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Um so if you if you if you're looking for dark tales for the sixth doctor, talk to Talk to Chris Chapman, he's got a couple. <laughs> oh, I've got, I've got plenty of uh, amazing and occasionally dark Chris Chapman uh, stories to come. Oh, wow. Oh, I think, have so, you just revealed something on our podcast? I think I probably have, oh, wow. yes. There we go. We've got an exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> Marvellous. Oh, I'm excited about that. <laughs> Uh, we we love Chris's stuff. Um, we we saw we had him on, Me and then too. we had to go off and do another episode just talking about our favourite Chris Chapman stories. And I think it's possibly one of the longest ones we've done. We just couldn't stop sort of oh, raving. He, he's he is really good. Um, he is a writer who delivers you something perfect and says, "Oh, I'm sorry, it's not very good." You know, he's. <laughs> And what he's done really is superb, almost always. In fact, always, actually always. Um, I've never yet had something come in from him where I haven't just fallen in love, you know, by the time I'm on page three at, at the latest. Um, he's a very, very good writer indeed. There's a few people who... Um, I do tend to go back to again and again because their writing is brilliant and oh I just love working with them and they just they get it they just really get you know what we want and then elevate it um you know you say I would like story x and they will go yes I can deliver story x I will try to deliver story x and they deliver story x to the power of 10 you know, um, and that is what is so great about uh, about working with uh, with people like that. Yeah, oh, brilliant. Um, so obviously the, the the current run of Six Doctor Adventures it's it's a sort of big story. You've obviously got mm -hmm. it planned out, and I like to think you've got it planned out for about a decade. I just wanted to keep going. It's so good, but. <laughs> um, Obviously, you've written a lot of stuff that's just, you know, very standalone. It's four parts and you're done, that yeah. kind of thing. So um, how different do you find the process of writing a single story compared to sort of planning a series like the, the Six Doctor Adventures? It, it is very different. Um, I love... The thing I love with writing... Um, one thing I love is when the ideas just happen to you. Um, you know, you can sit and stare at a piece of paper for ages and nothing happens and then suddenly it all comes together and that feeling is like nothing else. I love that so much. Um, the other part, part of writing that I, I love, which um, is going to sound um, ridiculously basic, but it's putting the words together. Um, I love how words sound I love how you can play with language and play with different ways of using it and telling stories and those are the things um that I love doing getting inside a character's head um so when I'm working on my own I love all those things happening but working collaboratively like this um it it's pretty much what I was saying about working with, with Chris Chapman before. Um, people will take ideas and run with them and they will take them to places that you had never dreamed of and that you would never have got to. Um, I do occasionally, I think there's sort of a natural thing that goes on. When you're listening to someone else's script or reading something by someone else and you think, oh, that's brilliant. Oh, I wish I'd done that. Yeah, oh, I I'd really have liked to do that. And then sometimes there's ones that you go, I could never in a million years have got there. Um, that's sort of, it, it's not me at all. I could not have 
found my way there. Um, and that is a really great thing um, that comes in when you're collaborating. Um, there's a project that we've been working on. I will, I'll have to be very careful so uh, the big Finnish publicity people don't um, <laughs> don't tell me off. But I will just say that next year is Colin Baker's 40th anniversary of his first appearance of the Doctor. So obviously we want to mark that. Um, and I got my ideas of how that was going to happen. Um, and then was working with Rob and we started to go off in other directions again that I would not have thought of. And it was getting better and, you know, building it and then we brought on somebody else as well um and I I like doing sort of comedy stuff um silly stuff even um and I tend to just sort of be quite flippant about it and like yeah well this sort of thing happens for the humor and then you bring someone on who takes it seriously and they start talking about the, how that the character is going to work and the motivation of that character and the background and what started off as something incredibly flippant for me that was totally surface level has suddenly been taken in this direction that you go oh my god yeah yes and that is that's the big difference um and when you're writing on your own you have you know you're usually working with an editor and editors can very much make or break a piece um uh hopefully usually make a piece um that's certainly the case with with working with people like uh Steve or Justin or Gary or Rob um and many other people because if you know if I list everybody we will go on for a long time so this is just you know the people that I am most used to working with um, but I've worked with many, many other fantastic editors. Um, but again, it's still focused on you and everything has got to come from you in some way. Um, and I love having my own little world that is formed out of my brain. But I love this completely different style of working. Um, that is brilliant as well. Um, what I'm not so great on is is when I'm plonked into somebody else's world because um, I, I just sort of worry that I don't get it and I'm not getting it right and all that sort of thing. But um, when I'm confident of what we're working, <laughs> that, I know, that I understand what I'm working on <laughs> with the Zip Doctor because, you know, I'm, I'm sort of allowed to do it. Um, I don't think those sentences made a lot of sense there. but. Those are the different things. <laughs> I love working on my own and having that sort of magic of forming something within. Um, and I love this whole new world for me of collaboration where things are expanding outwards. So, Connor, do you want to do the next one? So we were wondering what we can expect from the Sex Doctor adventures in future. Um, and I was interested in know as well, do you go into this sort of thing with a, a defined end point in mind? For the for the individual arcs, I, uh, is obviously how we choose to call them, um, yeah, we've got a, an end in mind. Um, there will be an end to the what we call the purity arc. Um, that will come to a definite end. Um and not too much further down the line, we will um, branch out a bit because uh, Rob and I um, sort of rather egotistically call call this, you know, our era um, the, with Heavy and Mel. Um, but there are other brilliant people out there and there are a lot of people that, you know, uh, will want to hear what's going on with other companions. So... You know, you're going to be getting Perry again. You're going to be getting Mrs. Clark again. I won't keep going, but there, um, there are other voices um, who you will be hearing again. Um, the Hebe and Mel and Purity 
uh, storyline was our first big thing. Um, but we had many other ideas along the way. Um, and there will be other arcs, some for other characters, some possibly for returning characters. Um, we are we are recorded for a lot of years in advance already. Um, and we have an idea of what we want to do um, for as long as we can continue, you know, um, for as long as Big Finish let us continue, for as long as the BBC let Big Finish continue, for as long as Colin is happy to work with us. We have a lot of things in mind that we want to do. Um, so it's not all going to be arcs, it's going to be some, you know, lovely little standalone things. Um, I don't, I don't want people always to, to know exactly, is this going somewhere? Is this not going somewhere? Um, sometimes it's very obvious. Um, and sometimes, you know, maybe there's something that will get picked up again further down the road and people may suddenly think, oh, hang on, are we actually doing an ongoing story? I don't know. Um, so we've got a lot of a lot of mixed things coming up, but we we know where we're going for now and we know where we want to take it um, for now. Um, you know, we have planned for as long as we can plan at the moment. Um, and there's some st <laughs> it's so hard. I say we're, we've recorded for years ahead. Um, and there's stuff I want to tell people about. And there's things I want people to experience. And I want to hear people's reactions. And it's like, OK, um, I'll hear how they react to that in 2027. <laughs> it's, that's hard. That is really hard. <laughs> Oh, there was a, a, I wrote a story prior to this um, for The Sixth Doctor and Perry. Um, it was called Like, and it was about um, sort of a world based on, uh, you know, internet approval sort of thing. Um, and I remember coming up with the idea for it while I was at my children's um, primary school sports day. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying it's a hugely original idea, but it felt quite fresh at the time. And I wrote it and it got recorded. And um, then several years later, and my children were now at secondary school and <laughs> we, we were actually several years into secondary school. Um, and it came out. Um, and I spent my whole time telling people, yes, because oh, because it was all, oh, well, you stole that idea from so-and-so. I was like, oh, no, I wrote it before that happened. <laughs> but that's that's how, how we have to, to work sometimes. And it can be quite frustrating, um, <laughs> especially when you think you've had a, a reasonably um, uh, sort of current idea. Um, and then it suddenly is way, way, way past being current. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's how things have to be. But uh, yeah, sometimes it can be. Um, I'm, I don't have patience. I, you know, I have no patience whatsoever. I want everything to just happen now. And uh, that is not the way of the world of audio drama, I'm afraid. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, once again, I think I've just answered the question you didn't ask. So that that, that was yeah. an interesting um, point, actually. Sort of, it, it's it must be sort of quite difficult to um, to try and find ideas that are not just current but likely to be current in three, four, five, six years' time. Um, yeah, because I remember listening to like and thinking, oh, it's like that Black Mirror episode. But it was not like that Black Mirror. It came episode. before the Black Mirror episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, maybe that's what we need. We need big finish to churn things out like Netflix does. 
<laughs> oh, I can't, I can't keep up with it as it is. I do my best. I really do my best. Um, I used to just about do it when we did, you know, the monthly adventures and we had one a month. I, I managed to keep up with that. But at the moment, it, it's terrible when you're working with people who you love and you love their work and they've done something and you have to sort of go, uh, yeah, I'm really sorry I haven't actually heard it. And it's not because you don't want to or anything like that. It's just because um, you literally have not been able to squeeze um, any more minutes in a day. Um, and uh, yeah, I feel a bit sad at all the things that I have probably missed out on. And one day I will manage to catch up with everything. But um, but yeah, <laughs> right now... Um, when you have to spend a lot of time making things, sometimes you, you just can't get to hear what other people have made. And that is um, that is quite sad and, as I say, occasionally embarrassing and mortifying. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've completely lost my place in questions now. <laughs> That's all right. So of us. You do it, Connor. I'll pass the book. So you were one of Big Finish's earliest contributors. How much has changed over the years from your point of view? There's an awful lot that's changed. It's a very, very different beast now. Um, because early on, um, you know, the work was uh, so new and different. And Gary Russell, um, with the help of obviously you know Jason Haig Ellery support and, and Nick Briggs and everyone was just pulling this all together in because nobody quite knew um nobody had really done it before obviously there have been things like the audio visuals but this was a, a whole new way of working um and the enthusiasm and the passion um was it was it was wonderful. It was so exciting, you know. Uh, but in some ways, you sort of took it a bit for granted. You know, I'd go along to the recordings to make the coffee for people, and it was, yeah, we're just making new Doctor Who adventures. <laughs> you know, you, um, uh, because it was just happening around you. And now things, things are different um, because... Uh, there's been so much more experience to build on. Um, so technically, they are they are different things entirely. But what hasn't changed is that passion. Um, I would say, you know, most people who are working on these things are so happy to be working on them. Um, I still get a little bit of a giddy feeling when I'm um, attending a recording day. Um, a big finish being brilliant have allowed me to um, do this remotely um, because uh, going into the studio for me will be very difficult for, um, you know, the, the accessibility issues and so forth. Um, but still, um, I just love the recording days that um the directors people like um Sam Clemens and Helen Goldwyn um just have this brilliant atmosphere Colin Baker and whoever our companions are at the time are always you know really welcoming and everyone just throws themselves into it and you do again you get a little bit giddy thinking I'm making a little bit of Doctor Who <laughs> um so Sometimes, sometimes, occasionally, you you sort of think, oh, t maybe take it a little bit for granted. And then when you actually think about it, you think, oh, no, no, this really is, this is a special thing that I'm going to do. Um, so technically, there are differences because we are now 20 years later. Big Finish is a... Uh, much bigger company and has um, a lot of different people, different working practices, but um, underneath it is it is still the same. You know, there, there is a part of me that thinks all oh, the glory days because of the fun and excitement of everybody treading the new path, um, but there really still is excitement today. Um, I just, uh, we, um, the set that is 
coming out imminently, possibly in a day or two after this is uh, being out there, perhaps, uh, has got um, a story in it which um, might have a bit of music in it, a um, little bit of Broadway. And we've had not only Colin Baker and Bonnie Lankford, we had um, a number of West End stars. And um, we, we had um, something that people may be interested to look out for at the time. Um, we had a rather interesting guest cameo from a, a, an incredible person who happened to be in the studio the same day and got... Um, dragged into Doctor Who recording and despite not being an actor proved himself to have just remarkable comic timing and that's that sort of summed up what it can be like um, just that fun and enthusiasm and excitement and people willing to get stuck in and have a go and have a laugh and um, that is just um, yeah it was like that in the early days and it still is like it. And yeah, when people listen to Broadway Belongs to Me, I hope that they will enjoy it as much as the cast and crew <laughs> enjoyed making it because, yeah, it was one of the ones that is um, that stands out as, a, as an experience. If you can hear a bell in the distance, that is because my, my cat was scratching herself and jingling. I'm, I'm not you know, doing a little Morris dance. Right? <laughs> Podcats, yes. I, I do have to shut mine downstairs because one of them is the greatest cuddle monster in the world. She's not happy unless she's sad. But we did do one episode and she snuck up and when I came to edit it, you could actually hear her purring in the oh. background. I can't remember which oh, one it was now. But there is one episode of this podcast where you can very clearly hear the cat purring and no matter <laughs> what I did, I could not edit it out at all. <laughs> oh, well, cat's purring is supposed to be an incredibly relaxing, de-stressing sound. So just think of all those people who are just chilling out, yeah. listening to your podcast. and just... yep. A podcast of relaxing yeah. morality. Mm. <laughs> um, so uh, a bit of a broad question, this one, really. But what would, yep. other than Doctor Who, obviously, what would you say the biggest influences behind your work were? Huh, yes. Um, yeah, it's quite hard, really. Um, so one thing that I've, I was hugely into and st still am hugely into, into was like the girls' comics of the 70s and 80s which have a lot of sort of science fiction and horror and creepiness and a lot of stories um, that deal with with fears um, and the sort of things that do quite resonate with me about you know like loss of identity or loss of agency um, loss of control that sort of thing and I do find that those things do crop up quite a lot um when i'm when i'm sort of you know shaping things um uh history history is a is a big thing um you did writing uh, at university and actually did ancient history at university um and um that uh i trained to be a history teacher which uh, didn't happen but <sighs> The thing that I really loved the idea of was um, getting people to see the human side of history. Um, you know, what motivated people, um, what they had to deal with, all that sort of thing. Um, and again, that's something that uh, that I, I like to bring in. Um, and uh, something else that I've spoken about um, being um, playing with language and playing with storytelling forms. Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm. If I say being influenced by Woodhouse, I, I, you know, obviously, he is unique. Um, there's nobody that can, that has a voice anywhere near P.G. Woodhouse that 
his use of language um, is just phenomenal. Um, he'll just put something in a form of words that no other human being before or since would ever have thought of putting together, and they are perfect. Um, and uh, I, I, I love that. Um, with, with actually with target books, um, a big influence in, in a number of ways. Um, uh, Doctor Who and the Crusaders was a big one for um, for history for uh, really um, putting yourself in a time. Um, that was that was one that did a huge amount um, for me. I, I just really um, devoured uh, that one. Um, but there were other ones like the Romans, which is you know letters and diaries. Uh, you know another way of playing with form there was um i had to think about frontios um there was words in it like um unhat stand like behavior or the doctor talking about having a hundred turlo lamp or things like that um which again you know just that tiny bit of playing with language um that i i i found really really influential in that you know there were phrases that would stick in my mind and I like to try and find the exact way of putting words together to, to say what I want. I'm, I'm, I'm not comparing myself to, you know, the people I'm talking about. But yeah, so but that sort of thing is um, is influences. And oh, radio comedy um, was my a real huge, big love. And as I say, that's sort of where I'd possibly thought I might end up if I hadn't um, swerved down the, the Doctor Who path. So um, that tends to be a bit of an influence uh, um, on my script writing. Um, to, uh, that uh, wonderful things from the, the 80s, um, like uh, Radioactive, um, Mausoleum Club, um, uh, Saturday, night, Saturday night fry things like that, which which all did a little bit of of playing, um, playing with form. And um, I suppose the, the the other one really is again I I absolutely love uh, Golden Age mysteries. Um, uh, and you would find um, a lot of uh, female writers sort of finding their their form there as well. Um, which which is a you know a, a really interesting uh, development. Um, so all those things I think have, in some way, led me to where I am now. Um, uh, in you know, <laughs> you know this sort of uh, in in a way that sort of feels like you know jack of all trades. You know a bit of this, bit of that, bit of the other, and you know they all come together and not necessarily make a you know, the sum of their whole. But uh, I would say that those are, uh, again, in a very, very long-winded answer, are some of the things that have uh, have sort of, you know, chivered me along the path and um, uh, that I, I owe a lot to. I think radio comedy is just excellent, and I think that a lot of people don't quite appreciate just... Uh, how good it is for giving you know new writers a voice something to say and that kind of thing it, it, i absolutely love it and sort of spend a lot of time oh. listening to that kind of thing yeah oh absolutely i mean i i mentioned stuff from the 80s just because that's you know what what i grew up um being majorly into but there's so much now count arthur strong i worship mm. john shuttleworth um uh, John Finnamore's John Finnamore is unbelievable yeah. because sketch comedy you burn out from sketch comedy incredibly soon because you know you just have to come up with so many ideas and he's on like I don't know ninth or tenth series um, of his his sketch show that he writes himself and is still coming up with every idea for it's like wow it's, it's um, incredible achievement really yeah yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's the best place, radio comedy. Well, Absolutely. Well, so uh, to keep ourselves in time, I I'm going to cut yeah. a few questions and we'll just ask you one more. <laughs> very, very well, we 
we didn't really know where to start with asking questions. <laughs> We've got like a, a, a <laughs> usual set we kind of go to and then go, yeah, but she's done so much. Where do we, where do we? So I think maybe we actually overplanned for this one a little bit. Um, but the, there is... Or I, or I overspoke a little bit. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But there is there is one that I do sort of particularly sort of want to ask, mm. so we will sort of make this the last one. Um, sure. But it, it's of all of the big finished projects you've worked on, what's your favourite? Uh, yeah, that that's not an easy one. <laughs> that's so not an easy. I didn't one. say it was an easy last question. <laughs> uh, probably the one I'm most proud of is Doctor and the Pirates. Yeah. Um, I was absolutely blessed that Gary Russell trusted me. Um, I I can't imagine many people would have done so um, when I was just coming up with ideas and phoning him and saying, um, can Colin sing? Uh, you know, um, and he let me run with it and facilitated it and, you know, got all sorts of people on boards like uh, Barnaby Edwards who you know managed to actually make it work and happen um i found out this week it's 20 years since um since pirates was released and that's quite um that was quite concerning really because i think it actually only happened about 3 months ago um but I think that one, in many ways, is the most me. Um, it, it, if people hate Doctor Who and the Pirates, which they are at perfect liberty to do so, and uh, may in fact be quite sensible, they probably wouldn't like like me much either, actually, because it it's it's sort of a very it's sort of mine. Um, I I feel that that is my the most mine of my of my things, and I'm still very proud of it, even though it's 20 years and that sort of makes me feel like I peaked 20 years ago and I'm <laughs> just treading water since so I probably would say the pirates but there are um things like oh walking to Babylon um was the first time I got to work with Elizabeth Sladen um and that was an absolute jaw-dropping meet your heroes moment that was incredible um and when we were all going for lunch, um, someone took me aside and said, did you realise you've been calling her Sarah all morning? And I didn't. <laughs> so um, I hope that's that's enough of a... And I try to keep that one short. For me, that was quite short. Um, well, yeah, thank you so, so much for uh, joining us. It's like I said, we'd wrapped up our first series. We were kind of having a bit of a rest and then we went, well, no, we've got to do this one. We've got to do this one. Absolutely. Um, and it's been absolutely marvellous and I'm, I'm looking thank forward been, to getting it online. It's been lovely. To, well, it's been lovely meeting both of you. Um, that's That's really been nice and you've been very lovely and flattering and encouraging and um you know that uh, i can't say that's not a lovely thing to happen to somebody <laughs> um but it's, it's been really nice talking to you and thank you for your patience i think because yeah do cut out anything you want it's fine you know chop few sections out no 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 it, it, it's all got to stay it's all been absolutely brilliant um so yep yeah, that has been our special sort of bonus mid-series break episode of a podcast of spurious morality um and it it, it really has been a pleasure to have you on jack it's been absolutely fantastic um, Thank you. so uh that that is all we have time for though so i will say thank you and goodbye uh i will also say thank you and goodbye to connor thank you and goodbye and we will be back in the not too distant future for uh, our second series, which we've, we've all got planned out. It's it's even more ambitious than our first, but we're looking forward to it. Uh, but in the meantime, have a have a great few months while we're off air, as it were. And thank you very much for listening. Goodbye now.